Attention, ladies and gentlemen. Our nation is officially under attack. Spears and daggers keep being thrown at our nation because we choose to stand for what we believe in. There's bombs, there's measles, they keep being thrown at our nation because we're considered a nation that is out to violate human rights and yet we're out to preserve humanity. Spears and daggers keep being thrown at us as we're considered all backward, all uncivilized, all barbaric Uganda, yet we choose to preserve our heritage, our African roots, our belief in the Almighty. These spears, these daggers, these bombs, these measles, they hurt us, they bruise us, they scare us and threaten us, but we refuse to break. We refuse to be another Sodom, another Gomorrah. We choose to say no to the very things that destroyed these two cities. And yes, the world may not understand us and very often we may be considered inhumane and the worst they are but we choose to refuse to be blinded so blinded enough not to see the dangers of homosexuality see homosexuality does not just destroy us emotionally it destroys us physically as we choose to succumb our bodies to sexual abuse pain and things they were never meant for it destroys the very sole purpose that God and vision love to be. It destroys not one or two or a bundle, but a whole generation. In the beginning, God created Eve beautifully for Adam to complete him, to love him, to help him, but most importantly, to co-create with him. Imagine, just imagine, a nation with only Adams and Adams or Eves and Eves. I can't help but wonder who will give birth to our children, who will give breath, life, sight to the next generation, who will co-create the leaders of tomorrow? No one. No one, ladies and gentlemen, that's why we choose to say no to homosexuality. Not because we are out to hate, to hurt, or to kill, but because we want to see a better tomorrow. And perhaps you're out there thinking, look, I am gay, I am lesbo, I can't change, I was born this way, I am destined to be this way, God created me to be this way. Well, you are wrong, my friend. See, God created you beautifully, not to be used and abused and in pain in the name of love. He created a much better purpose for you. See, homosexuality has never been nature. It is a behavior, a behavior like any other sin. And God did not create us to be sin. He created us for a much greater purpose. That's why he sent his one and only son to die on that rugged cross so that we would be free, free of all sin, including homosexuality. And perhaps you're thinking, look, I am this, I can't change, but have you tried? Have you really tried enough? Have you talked to God, God your creator, your father? See, God formed us. Sin deformed us, but he can surely transform us. And what do the rest of us do to help these uh, brothers and sisters? Are we so quick to discriminate them, calling them names, or do we seek to help them? Help them remove the mindsets that stro strongly bind them. Do we rebuke in love, or do we rebuke in hatred? Do we chase and bash them each time they seek help, forcing them into the wrongest of arms for comfort? Have we given up on them, calling them unredeemable and hopeless? Or do we keep hoping, praying that someday they will get back, someday they will see the light, someday they will change? 
See, God has not given up on any of us. He keeps giving us so many chances to make things right. Let us keep hoping. Let us keep praying and give these people a chance to change through our actions, through our words. Do we portray God's love? God's love enough to redeem, enough to save, serve a generation. See, the law may do its part. All these regulations and rules may help, but the greatest role is for us to play, to play together, not one, not two, not three, or a bundle, but a whole generation. So ladies and gentlemen, let us come together, not to just save our nation, but save a whole generation. Thank you very much.